Hi, everybody. It's Doc Martin. We're in the healing hour. Hi, Dr. Pat. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, everybody. Welcome to the healing hour with Dr. Sharon Martin. Yep. This is about bridging the mystical and the scientific. And today, really important conversation. I, probably right now, given what's going on in the world, one of the most important conversations, right? Right, Doc Martin, right. about sacred space, right? The sweet spot. Tell yeah. us about this. And tell us about how significant and important this is. Well, I just want to share a little bit because we got on here a couple of minutes late because the technology was giving me a headache and heartburn. This is those kind of upsets in your day is precisely why you need sacred space. So I think we should just take a minute and talk about what, what is sacred space? And for me, it's a place that I come to, and that can be in my own mind, but I actually have a physical geographic place where you can drop away the daily worries. And for me, a key component is where you turn into spirit. So Dr. Pat, you can think of how many times have you been in a sacred place geographically? And what does that do to your, uh, the way you feel, the way you think? Can you think of anywhere you've yeah, been? Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this. Um, I grew up as a Catholic and, you, you know, I cherish that upbringing and what I learned and my relationship um, to, uh, to Jesus, Mother Mary. I'm not a practicing Catholic now, so to speak, the way it's required by the Catholic Church. But it doesn't matter. When I go back east, New York, New Jersey, the first place I ask to go is St. Patrick's Cathedral. Mm. And why? Why is that? Um, and spend time there, not just go and, you know, gawk around, but go and visit the many chapels. And, you know, you can walk in there on any day, Sharon, and, um, and there will be these mini services happening because the chapel, of course, is gigantic, but they have separate other smaller chapels. They, and I always go to Mother Mary, always go to that chapel, mm -hmm. right? That's her space. And there's always something happening there. And people ask me, we don't get it, you know, I don't bash the Catholic church or religion, but I don't talk about it. And they're always surprised to hear me say, that is my go-to place. That is a sacred space. And I think sacred space transcends religion. So when you go there, what changes in the way you feel or what happens to you when you go there? Clearly, I'm walking into a place that there is so much loving, blessed energy. You know, it's not a place that just Catholics go. You know, there are some religions that you can't go in a building. You know, you can't go in a building if you're not if you of just, that. Right. right. But that's not St. Patrick's Cathedral. People from all over the globe go there. And they go in there with this open heart. And I think that's what I feel. It is one of the most cleansing, uh, energetic cleansing places for me. Mm -hmm. You feel lighter if that's a, you feel lighter, energetically lighter. You know, it's almost the last time I went, I of course brought back some holy water, but the last time I went, you know, the feeling there was as if whatever the burden of that day or that week or that year was carrying dissipated. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what sacred space does. It really moves us beyond the heaviness of our day, our world, our politics, whatever that is. And that's for me, what mm -hmm. I hold close to my heart in sacred space. And you know, the thing that I find powerful is it doesn't have to be a church. No. 
It doesn't have to be a known religious site. Although um, many of you know about the Freemasons and they actually built their churches with certain geometries, with certain ways they faced particular directions on land that I think energetically they sensed. And a lot of sacred sites across the world are places where I believe humans who are, were better at sensing energy back then knew this was a key place. A key place to do what, I guess, is comes to my mind. For me, it's a place where you connect to your highest, you can dialogue with spirit, you can turn it over to something higher. I mean, when I think about Stonehenge, by the way, did you read this recently? They actually think it was physically moved from Wales. I know they used to think it was blue stone from Wales, but they used to think they, you know, they floated the stones on barges or whatever they did up there and then built it, but apparently it was built previously. But anyway, when we get into a place like that, it can be a church, it can be a megalith, like Stonehenge, like Palenque, um, places where literally there's a marking, a cairn um, along, the, along the Irish coast. Your own personal Zen den, mm -hmm. um, a clearing in a grove of trees, that space signifies and if it didn't signify before you took it, once you start going there, is saying, okay, I am opening now to my higher self. I am opening to spirit. I am opening to connection. And I think that when you say your troubles go away, I think for sacred space, the more people who use it, the more that energy expands mm -hmm. and and reverberates and sets up the vortex yeah yeah and i've been to busy places that i consider sacred ground mm -hmm. zero mm -hmm. um in the middle of the busiest i think place on the planet maybe to my friend says tokyo's like worse um but ground zero new york and when you go there there's something see and i've been there uh, at three different times after the event. One, I went there to visit a detox center and did some interviews of people that were funded uh, through Tom Cruise, by the way, they were funded to detox and help the people, the firefighters. And, and I did those interviews and, and, and I went there when it was still rubble, so to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I went later on and I was really struck how the energy hadn't changed. Right. You know, there was a sense uh, uh, that's very different than being in St. Patrick's Cathedral. Mm -hmm. There was almost a sense of passionate and purposeful actions in the world. There was almost this sense of moving energy. And that was different. Um, but where have you been? You know, what place comes to mind for you? So... The places that I have been moved, and I mean that spiritually speaking, yeah. or shifted yeah. out of my, um, I traveled in uh, Guatemala, outside mm -hmm. of Antigua. I, I got a young man to drive me in the little vans called Colectivos. And we went to this site that only the locals went to. It was uh, called Ishimche. And it was, if you walked back past some ruins, there was a pile of rocks um, and the trees growing up around it and grass growing on it. And inside the rocks were small cubby holes that whoever built this left. And I had brought some, They in, in Central America, they have colored candles because they light the black one to get rid of negativity. They light the red one to bring in love they like the green one to get more money anyway so i had these uh colored candles and i 
lit them and melted the wax so that they stood inside this little bread box sized cubby. And there were maybe four or five cubbies around the uh, diameter, the periphery of this rock structure. And that was the most beautiful feeling. Mm. And then I learned that the shamans, and they're called um, sacerdotes um, in the Guatemalan, in Spanish Guatemalan culture, that's where the sacerdotes came and prayed. So something, I felt it, and this was before I really understood energy medicine, but I felt that place. And in fact, it's one of the pictures on my website because it was so moving to me. But that space shifted me. It was the sweetest, most, it's like my troubles went away, my worries went away. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love that. Um, so anyway, I want to take a quick break and come back to talk more about the value of sacred space. But before we close off to break, I wanted to read you this comment, this, this writing. I don't know how many of you have read anything by Annie Lamott. She has a phenomenal book called Help, Thanks, and Wow. Um, very spiritual. But here's something that I want you guys to think about. Astonishing material and revelation appear in the lives all the time. Let it be. Unto us so much is given. We just have to be open for business. So when we come back, I want to talk about how do we open for business? And we'll continue this on building sacred space when we come back. And what I want to say about this too, for everybody listening is, this is for all to be able to do. What Doc Martin is sharing is accessible and available to all of us. When we come back, take the journey with us. We'll be right back. back the healing hour this is a show fantastic show dr sharon martin does bridging the mystical and scientific later on in the show um you're going to see and feel and lean into what sacred space might look like as sharon then takes us on a journey um of the beauty of creating and showing what the steps are to set up your own altar you know, the energy you build, how you build it. And one of the things too, that we should let everybody know is when we talk about these things, there's not a right or a wrong. And that's what Doc Martin stands for. I wanna make sure if you all want to work with Sharon, work with her on how to set up an altar, work with her on blessings, stone readings, go to drsharonmartin.com. You'll know Maximum Medicine Radio is another show she does. We have got a lot we're talking about this year. Today, it is sacred space, the sweet spot, the importance of it. And here's the question. Why is sacred space a sweet spot? Sharon, uh, Doc Martin, let's talk about this. I gave you a little bit of an example, but I think our listeners listening today, everybody listening can probably point to a place, a moment in time, some, somewhere where they felt something that literally shifts them instantaneously. So why is this sacred space a sweet spot? Well, first, what, before I start, I just want to say, I don't know about you guys, but I rode in on that music at break. I rode into this topic. So that was beautiful chanting or ohm or what, mm. oh, anyway. Yeah. What makes it sweet? For me, when you connect, first, when you say, this is the space, you declare it, this is the space where I go to be my highest self, I go to drop all the tension, I go to link up with God. If you don't believe in God, it doesn't matter. This is the space where you connect to something bigger than your human mind. And when you do, you get a release of tension, you get knowledge, 
you get the answers to questions. And the more you use it, the more that connection builds. And this is sort of the concept of prayer when you're connecting to something bigger than yourself. But this is a place where you can be, where you say, what I'm doing here in this moment is sacred, whether it's just me being quiet. And gosh knows in this world, we, we need some quiet time. Yeah. This is where you say, okay, this is the place. I'm here. And if you believe in God, I'll use the word God right now, or I'll use spirit. Um, you don't have to believe. God, I'm here. Hear me. This is our space to connect. Hello, are you there? And when you say that, the unseen world, which is very powerful, it's right there asking to be connected to you. Your spirit guides, your ancestors who have passed on, your angels, whatever you connect to or feel in that outside world, the unseen, that they hear you say that and they are present because they don't step in unless you ask. But this is what makes it sweet. When I, even when I talk about it, I can feel that connection. I can feel the shift and it feels good. And it, my heart opens mm -hmm. and my mind quiets and I get a buzz, I get a hum, I get a, a warmth. That, that only word for that is this is darn sweet. What do you think, Pat? Yeah, I mean, the, to me, you know, what is it about creating sacred space? What is our end game? What are we looking to do? And, you know, it's really interesting as I think about this and I think about these moments uh, where you can feel when something is upon you, you can feel it, even if you can't think about it, but you can feel this heaviness. You can feel something that's got you stuck. You can feel something maybe that you want to create for another person. You know, maybe you're not having a conversation with you about it, but you're at the point where you have a sense of powerlessness in your life for a scenario. And what kind of relief can you create for yourself? And one of the easiest ways to start to make that transition, right, to create some movement in a direction you want to go is through the energy and the light of a sacred space. And they come in all different sizes, all different shapes. They can be as elaborate. I've seen, I've been into homes where people have had a full wall altar and yet I've created my own sacred space on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And the point is there is an energy that we generate in this moment of that divine connection. And that's really what we're talking about. It's creating, you know, somebody asked me a question the other day because they know I'm starting to talk about straight smart spirituality. And they said, you know, I got a question for you, Pat. This is on an interview. I got a question for you. What's the shortest distance between two points? And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what is this question about? And I said, oh, that's easy. Uh, it's a spiritual path. And that is the shortest distance between two points. And of course, that lends itself to many other questions. But this sacred space, to me, is a way to accelerate that. It's a way to shift energy, isn't it? Yes, and you know, you said something, you said find some relief. So we can come to this space needing relief. We can also come for elevation That's right. um, to connect and all of a sudden give me some answer so I can approach this task a little differently. Or it's a, just a peacefulness. I think the key thing is, um, I was going to say quiet, but that's not necessarily true because you can be outdoors sitting under your favorite tree, beating a drum and chanting. So it doesn't have to be quiet. It doesn't have to be indoors. It doesn't have to look like an altar. But I think it's a place where you literally declare, this is my personal, deep, 
powerful space where I connect to spirit. And if you don't have any sense of spirit, this could be your higher self. I, I happen to think there is spirit out there, but this is where you say, I'm here. This place I'm at now is where I'm going to do, I'm going to do some shift in my energetics. I'm going to do some shift in my thinking. I'm going to do some shift in the tension in my body. And you might not have all those thoughts so articulated, but you step in. And as soon as you step in, and I'll take, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I step in to the main um, grass place. I don't know what you would call it. The, the grounds between all of the temples at Palenque in the Yucatan in Mexico. Wah. Instantly you feel it because in places like this, there have been millions of people before you coming and establishing that intention. And that energy builds and builds and builds. And that's why it's so wonderful to go to places like um, Machu Picchu, places like um, maybe, I, I haven't been, to Easter Island, to the statues. Right. There, you say, wham, I am here. I am here. And everyone else who's come before you has said that also. So it's a declaring this space to be powerful. And the power can be in shifting the negative. It can be in bringing some new ideas. It can be just in giving yourself some peace. For me, I love it when I feel the connection to the unseen world, to my spirit guides. And then I don't feel so alone. And in today's world with this isolation and masks and all this stuff we're all fed up with, that that feeling of connection on a really deep heart centered level is so wonderful. And you know, one of the things that we're going to do today too, and let's talk about it before we go to break, if we could. One of the things that we're going to do to do is, you know, really walk our our viewers through how to create this sacred space. You know, how it doesn't matter where your skill is or who you've studied with. I mean. Sometimes we come up with some sort of credential we think we need to have to do this. And I right. think this is busting through all of the myths about that. Sacred space is sacred space for everyone who wants to invite it in, not for a select view. And that's what you're going to walk us through today. When we come back, you're going to really be invited to this beautiful setting of what it is you can do that will literally, as you watch Doc Martin, shift your energy, elevate you. And more importantly, you'll be able to do it after the show is over. Let's take a short break, everyone. When we come back, Doc Martin, Dr. Sharon Martin will walk us through how to create our own sacred space. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. This is a very, very special edition for those of you out there of the Healing Hour. Um, we're talking about sacred space, the sweet spot. Dr. Sharon Martin, if you want to find out more about Sharon, if you want to work with Sharon to create your own sacred space or to work with her on blessings, shifting energy, energy healing, go to drsharonmartin.com. Today, Doc Martin is going to take us on a journey about how do we create this sacred space? How do we create this space that literally taps into that energy field? You know, that place where you can set an intention, that place where things manifest. Um, Doc Martin, this is a very special time. So take us through this, please. So here's what I want to accomplish today in this. I am going to tell you guys some of the background for setting up a sacred space. And then I'm going to move over to um, my table on the side here where I'm going to 
open and create my altar uh, to establish my space for today. So if you happen to have with you or you've got anywhere around you that you have um, a covering or a cloth to put down on a space, you don't have to, but if you have any sacred objects that you want to include, do you have anything, a crystal that you love that means something to you? What we're trying to do here is whatever and this sounds like paraphernalia, but it, those items have their energies and those energies build as you use them more. So whatever you have that's going to say, this space is special because this space really is special. It is of your highest self, your highest potential. It's where you're going to communicate with your higher self or with spirit. So this is the place where you're telling your most deepest inner truths. This isn't the place to sit down and say, well, I guess you could say, um, I'm not sure with the snow tomorrow if I should take the back road to work or not. But hopefully those aren't the questions you really need answers to. This is something I see as really big stuff, big in terms of, okay, spirit, I need some help. How do I keep my resilience? Now I'll share with you, for me, I work in a rural health clinic and I'm a physician. This COVID has got us pretty unglued. Um, obviously we wear masks, but there's a fear with every time a patient is there, do they have uh, COVID that I don't know? Are they asymptomatic? How do I make sure I stay safe? So for me, coming to sacred space is a place for me to get resilience, to get a release of tension, a release of fear, to reestablish connection with my spirit guides. And from that, hopefully infuse my energy field with some sustenance and nourishment and strength. So when we do this, if you have whatever ingredients, now, if you want to set up your sacred space outdoors, you don't need any paraphernalia. You know that it happens to be a place by the pond that you love, or you know that if you go out to the pasture where um, your horse is, that standing there waiting for your horse to come, that this is a sacred place for you, however you determine it. But it is a place for you to say, Spirit, I am here and I am ready to talk. So it's important to have an opening statement and it's important to have a closing statement. Although you should know that energetically your sacred space will close on its own in 24 to 48 hours. But it's really good to say, hi, I'm here. Let's start. And thank you so much for being here with me. Let's end. When you claim a space for your particular intent, your energy field listens and it tunes in. So we are moving into powerhouse of a time. That's why I call it a sweet spot because tension is gone, nourishment is ramped up, my empowered self feels stronger and ready to keep going. And always, always end with gratitude. And if you sense the elements around you, if you sense that your spirit guide has come in or Archangel Michael has come in, take a minute to say thank you for being here. This is a place of dialogue. It's a place of mutual respect. And it's a place where you don't come in and assume that you're bigger or better. This is a place where you are sharing relationship with spirit. So we're going to take a minute if you want to get your items, if you have them with you. And if you want to um, be ready to go quiet and step into this space, we're going to move over uh, to my table here. And I'm going to count on uh, Jacob as a producer to tell me if he can't hear me, if something goes haywire. 
So I have my items here. I'll just tell you what they are because for me, they're pretty powerful. They have meaning. This is a hawk feather. And for me, connection to the hawk when I was studying shamanism was very, very big, big energy. This is a meteorite that I got in, um, in the Yucatan at uh, one of the falls. A young man had a booth uh, where all the tourists stopped and there was this meteorite that I was just drawn to and it has power for me. This is my dragon stone that I got in Sedona and it's how I connect with dragons. Dragons being primordial energy forces of the earth. For me anyway, there are celestial dragons. So I like to have that there for calling in power. This is a carving that I got in Guatemala. It was so interesting. I stopped at a little booth near a, a, a church and a young man had this box of items that looked really old. And this, he found this after a uh, earthquake it had uprooted a tree and un, in there he found this carving. So I don't know how old it is. It's probably pre-Columbian, but to me, it's the energy of mother earth. I have a candle. So when I do light it, I'm not gonna light it today. Just says, I'm making this space special. I am making this space one of honor. And I've brought some uh, chrysanthemum flower uh, buds so that one of the things about space, about your sacred space is that you always bring of yourself a sense of honoring. And a way to do that is to bring a gift. And nothing is more beautiful than a gift of color or flowers or a leaf um, or a special uh, bud. Something that just says, thank you for being here with me. I honor you. Take this gift of, of small beauty, however small. It says, I, I'm happy to be here. So I'm just going to move these to the side for a minute. Oh, and the last stone I have is my lineage stone from my shamanic training. So it has literally the energy of all the shamans, Peruvian shamans who came before. I'm starting with a cloth. I have some beautiful cloths from uh, Peru. This is a weaving. And however you do this, now, you don't have to leave this down. You don't have to leave this in place, um, but you can. So if you have a Tibetan mandala cloth or uh, something in your gorgeous, most favorite color, that you can lie, put down on your altar, but establish here I am. And if you're outdoors, you can mentally see your space. You can mark it off and delineate it and say, here I am. And we start with an opening statement. And I'll just share with you my take on the statement from uh, the, what I learned from Dr. Alberto Violdo. And I call to the winds of the South, come wrap your coils of light around me and help me shed the past and help me to walk softly on the earth. Teach me the beauty way. And I'm calling to the winds of the West, come Jaguar, come protect this medicine space, track for me what is unknown and lead me over the rainbow bridge, the path beyond death. Calling to the winds of the north, come hummingbird, come and seek out the nectar. Take me on the sacred journey, help me find the sweetness. And calling to the winds of the east, come eagle, lift me to the place of the new perspective. Let me fly wing to wing with spirit, show me the new vision. Mother Earth, we gather for the healing of all your children. Let us come together for that healing now. Father, Son, Grandmother, Moon, Storm, Brothers and Sisters, Great Spirit of a Thousand Names, come and let us sing the song of life one more day.
Now I have determined already where south and west and all of that, but I'll come now and I'll just bring my items into here. One of my spirit animals is bear. So I love that I have these fetishes of bear. So I've opened space. I've called it, I've said it somehow, however you want to say it. Just something that you might say every time because in that repetition, in that ritual is a return to that energy and that energy builds and builds. So I purposely need, because of this COVID craziness, plus we're snowed in and iced in and South Central PA, I need a little uplifting. I need a little resilience. <sighs> when you enter this space, you can sort of feel the tension leave you. And you just mentally, I'll say it out loud. You don't have to say it out loud because you're mentally always communicating with your helpers. But I'm calling on the lineage and I'm calling on the power of Mother Earth. And I'll just speak as if you might speak in your mind. Hey, you guys, I'm here today because I'm out of energy. I'm tired. I'm tired of being scared. I'm tired of being cooped up, especially with this darn ice. But I know things are going to go the way they're going to go. And so rather than fight it, I'd like you to take the tension away and bring me some resilience. Bring me some nurturing so I can move forward. So right now, for those of you listening, I feel the power of the earth dragons coming in. So I grab my stone because I felt that force coming from the earth. And the more you do this, you will feel things also. You may not now, but you will. And I'm like, okay, dragons are here. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here. And I hear in my mind that they are saying, we will be here to burn away the tension. We will use our fire breath to clear the negativity. So I'm, I'm so relieved they're here. I feel good about that. And then I just get a sense that, that, and I've named my bear spirit animal, I've named him Osha. This is a Zuni fetish. And he just says to me, he said, you have the strength, you have the power, don't give up. Your path here is important. Walking this path is essential for today's uh, energies. And this is true for all of you. This is not just something just for me. This is true for all of you. This is the place where you recognize your importance in the world. And you can feel that come over you. You have a purpose. You have a purpose on this earth that will feed into all of the collective energies of humankind. And you can feel that going on right now. And you just relax and breathe and be with your, your spirit guides that come in. Be with their energy as you link your field to them in this space you've created. You get their magnitude. You get their power. You get their knowing. You become more than you were five minutes ago. So just taking a moment in your own space, however you've set it up, join in and link in. And I'm getting the sense that my mom who's passed away and who usually wasn't, she wasn't too big on this kind of stuff, but I just got a feeling that she was here, standing here, standing guard ready to ease my stress. So that's a good feeling. That's, that's the whole wonder of being in this sweet spot is I got that feeling. I felt that 
I have helpers standing by. And even if it's just taking the time to exhale, even that biologically ramping up your parasympathetic system, even that is healing. And I look at the colors and I feel gratitude for the incredible elements of the earth and the cosmos, the beauty, the fact that this is age old prayers to the earth, to the sky. Gratitude that I'm part of this journey, this humankind evolution in concert with earth. And I just, right now, I'm feeling sweet. I'm feeling restored. I'm feeling energized, although calm. So then you always want to close with a closing statement, the very least with gratitude. Winds of the South, thank you for bringing your light here. Thank you for joining us today. I'll see you next time. Winds of the West, oh, Jaguar, you're always protecting me. You're always helping me find the unknown. Thank you for being here. Hummingbird, taking me to the sweet spot once more. Thank you for being here. Great Eagle, taking me to a new perspective. I love when I connect with you. Thank you for being here. Mother Earth, as always, I honor you, and I'm one with you. Father, Son, Grandmother, Moon, Star Brothers and Sisters, thank you for shining down on us and helping us continue our day-to-day -day life on our journey together. Thank you for being here. So all of you guys, close up your space. And Jacob, I'll come back to join Dr. Pat now. Mm. I want everybody to take a breath in. Um, and by the way, if you've missed any part of this, this is available through our uh, transformation, the Transformation Network YouTube channel, but also it replays on Facebook. This will be here. Please feel free to watch this as many times as you like. And also, Sharon, Doc Martin, thank you so much for taking us on this journey. And I want to say to people, um, if they want to work with you to create their own sacred space, you know, there are things that are important to each of us. And whatever those things are, they will call to you. You can bring them in. You know, there is no right, no wrong. This is such a beautiful process that many of us wonder, am I getting the right stone? There is no such thing as that. Mm -hmm. It really is always the right stone, isn't it, Sharon? Yes, and it doesn't have to be a stone. No. Um, but if you ever need help um, wondering how do you open space, how do you close space, what are the energetics behind that? What is a request too little or too grand to ask? There's nothing too little or too grand to ask because when you connect, there is so much available. And I'm, I'm kind of in a zone right now. I don't know yeah. about you, Pat, but yeah. this, is, this is the sweetness because when you tap in, and these are tools in a sense, these um, items, but then they build their power because you have connected with them and you have reinforced that power over and over that now when I pick up my dragon stone, I hardly need a minute before I can feel that primordial currents of energy. Or I pick up my lineage stone and boom, I'm in class with Alberto teaching me something. So when you build your space, and again, it doesn't have to be indoors, it can be outdoors, it can be 
anything you want it to be, but you are declaring it your sweet spot, your place of power, your place of connection to something bigger than you. And I really wish that for all of you because the world is hard right now. But in this sweet spot, that hardness diminishes Mm -hmm. and we are rejuvenated and restored and renewed. And hallelujah, I love that. And boy, I hope, you know, as we continue to move forward, everyone, I'm really looking forward for some of the live webinars Doc Martin is going to be putting together you know, so that we can all do this together. It's so, so very powerful. So there's much more to come in that way. Please go mm-hmm. to drsharonmartin.com. That's drsharonmartin.com. Uh, Doc Martin, personal message. What do you want to leave us with today? Well, usually I say something a little more generic, but we are so in this fed up with COVID and isolation and the polarity that's in the world. But I really believe that we can go through this, that we can evolve as humans. And going to the sacred space, to the sweet spot, will give us the knowledge of how to move forward, will give us the calming that we're not so inflammatory around other people. And so I just feel that we've got a lot coming I think that we're going to evolve beautifully. And if I can do anything to help you, please let me know. And I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. Dr. Sharon Martin, everyone. I'm Dr. Pat. Thanks to Jacob and Benny. And for all of you out there, you know, this is the moment that you can create your own sacred space. Take whatever time you need to create it. Really lean into it and feel the energy and the power of this sacred, sweet spot. Mm. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Dr. Pat. Jacob, Benny, thank you. And to all of you out there, remember, we so love you and thank you for walking with us on this journey. We'll see you next time.